Hey everybody, how's it going? We're back from Red Wing. Good one. Had a good, well, Flosser had another stellar finish. Just another second place for the guy. Sick. So uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna let him take the wheel on this one since I had kind of a tough finish. It was a tough tournament overall. Brett King going into this was probably one of the favorites. He really didn't disappoint. He had a good first day. No, yeah, he had a stellar dirt too. Yep. You know, that, that was probably one of the top three roughest pre-fishes we've ever had. I mean, every day was either rain or snow for six days straight. The one morning we woke up to six inches of snow on the ground. I don't think it ever got above 35 for pre-fish every day. If you look at the weights and the number of fish that were weighed, the caliber of anglers that were there, there was 120 plus boats there with some of the best fishermen in the country. Some of the most well-known river fishermen in the country too. It just blows my mind how tough fishing really was. Yeah. You, you gotta realize that when you're done just giving birth, the last thing you <laughs> want to do is eat. So it, it, it was a, a post-spawn event, but yet they weren't quite to the point where they were putting the feed bag on after they were done spawning. They were still in a very negative to neutral mode. So slow was definitely the way to go. And, and when I say slow, like 0.2 to 0.4 miles an hour, and 0.4 was getting on the fast end for me. Um, so yeah, it, it was slow, it was monotonous, you really didn't feel like you were covering any ground, but that's what it took. Right, so finding the fish initially, the major technique to finding those fish was just pulling three ways upstream. Yep. And to find those fish, we had two different presentations. One here, this is called a Dubuque rig. It's where you actually have a heavy jig on the bottom of your lead. And on the other part of the three-way system, you have a, just a free-floating hook that you could tip with a night crawler or a minnow or whatever you wanted. So that was one way you could crawl upstream and get those fish to eat. So this was what I primarily used for the tournament days. We got a three-way with a short dropper. Weight depended on the current you were working in. Um, but this really seemed to be key for me. Uh, Phelps floater, double hook. We were using crawlers. Um, I shouldn't say that. We were using minnows and crawlers. Crawlers seem to favor the bites, uh, but we did get bit on minnows as well. Uh, but the Phelps floater helped keep that bait up in that current because it was pretty stiff current we were working and you had to be able to get your bait up somehow and it, it seemed like this Phelps floater was the key for that. Yep, I agree. If you just went with a plain hook, the current wanted to lay it down into the bottom and you come up with a lot of debris because there was a lot of debris being flushed down the river from all the rain and snow that we've had. So some kind of floating mechanism to keep that bait just off bottom as you were swinging in and out of the current seam was major. So that did, that did help a lot for all two bites that I got. 16 hours of fishing. <laughs> I only had four more. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a fun tournament though. We learned a lot and you had to be on your toes at all times. It's small spots that you can really zone in on, but those spots are scattered throughout the river system and they continually had different pods of new fish moving in throughout the day. Oh yeah, I, I mean, you could either find a spot and wait the fish out, which worked for some people, or you could take the run and gun approach and try to hit as many spots as possible and try to contact the fish that way. I mean, the first day, the first day I pitched jigs, I pulled three ways, I hand lined, and I used Dubuque rigs. All in one day of fishing, and it, I must have fished seven to eight different spots to get three bites. There was 44 zeros on day one, but by no means were any one of those guys out of that tournament because time and time again, tournaments up on pool four, a 40 pound bag in one day is not unheard of. I mean, there's some quality fish there. And when you find that right little magical spot, boy, you can get healthy quick and, and put a lot of big fish in the boat. I agree. So no, that tournament's out of the way. The Colossal almost got it done again. And uh, now we're moving on to a new venture. Actually, <laughs> we're, we're headed up to Sturgeon Bay in about a week, and we're going to be playing around in that Sturgeon Bay Bass Open. And neither of us have a ton of experience up there, especially bass fishing, especially that time of year. But it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. It's a bass, dude. How hard they, uh, how yeah. hard can they be to catch? Yeah, it's a exactly, bass. Exactly. So we're just going to go catch them, right? It's that easy. No problem. <laughs> so tomorrow we got to get rested up. I'm, I'm going to film a turkey hunt with him in the morning, so hopefully I have some more footage for you guys soon. I do apologize for the lack of footage we've had over the past couple of weeks, but we will have some more for you moving forward. So appreciate tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. So take care. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. See you.